Hi there, in this video I'm going to do a revision question on vectors. So let's take a look at the question. Question number six, find the angle between the line, and this line is in Cartesian form, x plus one over two, that is equal to y minus two over one, that is equal to z minus three over minus two, and the plane, and this plane is in Cartesian form, two x plus three y minus seven z is equal to five. So let's see how this is done. Let's go back to the paper and pen. So we have the line, and this line is in Cartesian form, and we also have the plane in Cartesian form as well. Now, in order to find the angle between the line and the plane, I have the screenshots just to remind you of the results. So let's go to the screenshots. So given the vector equation of a line, r equals a plus lambda m, and the equation of the plane, r dot n equals capital P. The acute angle theta between the line and the plane can be found using a formula, sine theta, and that is the absolute of m dot n. m, remember, is the direction vector of the line. Dot n, n is the normal vector of the plane, divided by the modulus of m times the modulus of n. So, let's go back to the paper and pen. Now, first things first, we need the direction vector of the line, and we also need the normal vector of the plane for us to apply the formula. Now, our line is in Cartesian form, and to work out the direction vector of the line in Cartesian form, so let me remind you, let's go to the screenshots. Now, if you have the line in Cartesian form and the line which is given as x minus a1 over b1, that is equal to y minus a2 over b2, that is equal to z minus a3 over b3. And provided that you have minuses in your numerator, the fixed point vector of the line is a1i plus a2j plus a3k, whereas the direction vector of the line, that will be given as b1i plus b2j plus b3k. So the terms in your denominator will be the components of the direction vector of the line. However, provided again that if you have negatives appearing in the numerator, the fixed point vector will be ignoring the negatives a1i plus a2j plus a3k. So it's very important that you recognize that result. So going back to the paper and pen, let's use that knowledge to work out the direction vector of the line. That is what's required. So remember, these terms in the denominator will be the components of the direction vector. So the direction vector, and we use the letter M for the direction vector, that will be 2i plus 1j plus a minus 2k. So that is simply the direction vector for this line. Now, we also need the normal vector for this plane. So if we go to the screenshot, remember the result requires us to have the normal vector for the plane n. Going back to the paper and pen, to get the normal vector, now this equation is in Cartesian form, so we have the Cartesian equation of the plane. So let's convert this into scalar product form as r dot, so r is, remember, xi plus yj plus zk dot, and to work out this normal vector here, the normal vector comes from the components or the coefficients of x, y, and z in this Cartesian form. So the coefficient of x is 2, so that will be 2i, plus the coefficient of y is 3, so plus 3j, plus, and the coefficient of z is minus 7, so minus 7k. So the coefficients of x, y, and z, remember, will form the components and will form your normal vector in this case. That is equal to 5, the scale on the right. So as you can see, now my plane is in scalar product form. So this vector here is n, and I have m, the direction vector of the line. 
So let's use the formula to work out the acute angle theta between the line and the plane. So remember the formula. The formula is sine theta. Sine theta is the absolute. So this is the absolute sine m dot n. So m dot n. These are both vectors, remember. Divided by the modulus of m times the modulus of n. So for us to use this formula, we need to calculate m dot n. So we have m, we have n. Let's work that out as a side calculation. So m dot n. So m is 2i plus j minus 2k. So I have 2i plus j minus 2k dotted with n which is 2i plus 3j minus 7k. So 2i plus 3j minus 7k. Now remember to work out the scalar or the dot product, all we do is simply multiply the components of i, j and k and then add. So if I multiply the i components, I'll have 2 into 2 plus so I always add, multiplying the j components, we have 1 into 3. Plus again, multiply the k components, minus 2 into minus 7. So if we simplify here, 2 into 2 is 4, plus 1 into 3 is 3. Minus 2 into minus 7 is plus 14. So if we go one stage further to simplify, so 14 plus 3 is 17, 17 plus 4 is 21. So that should be the solution for m dot n. So that is one of the requirements from the formula. The other requirement of the formula is the modulus of m. So let's work out the modulus of m, modulus of magnitude. To work out the modulus or the magnitude, all we do is we calculate the square root of, so it's always the square root of. Now, looking at m, it's the square root of the component of i squared plus the component of j squared plus the component of k squared. So we square the components, in other words, and then we add, and then afterwards take a square root. So the component of i is 2, don't forget the square. Always add component of j is 1. Don't forget the square. Plus again, component of k is minus 2. Not forgetting to square. So if we continue, so the modulus or the magnitude of m will be the square root of 2 squared, which is 4, plus 1 squared being 1, minus 2 squared is 4, and this will simplify to 4 plus 1 plus 4 is 9, root 9 being 3. So that should be the answer to the modulus of m. Now bearing in mind we also need the modulus of n. So we have n as a vector 2i plus 3j plus, uh, minus 7k. Let's perform that calculation. Let's do a side calculation and continue on the reverse. So n is 2i plus 3j minus 7k. So n is 2i plus 3j minus 7k. So let's work out the magnitude of n or the modulus of n. So remember it's a square root calculation and all we do is square the components and add. So if I square the component of i, I'll get 2 squared, always plus, squaring the j component is 3 squared, plus again, squaring the k component is minus 7 squared. So let's go one more stage to simplify. So the modulus of n will be the square root of 2 squared, which is 4, 
3 squared which is 9 minus 7 squared 49 and if we go one more stage to simplify so 9 plus 4 9 plus 4 is 13 13 plus 49 is 62 so in this case this is the modulus of n another of the requirements of this formula here now we have everything we have m dot n that is 21 we have the modulus of m that being 3 we have the modulus of n we calculated as root 62 so let's use the formula so sine theta is the absolute m dot n just to remind ourselves is 21 so it's 21 divided by the modulus of m which is 3 so let's include that 3 times the modulus of n that is root 62 and in order to work out theta theta will be the inverse sine of 21 over 3 root 62 so if you work that out in the calculator you should have an angle of 62.7 degrees so that being the angle between the line and the plane so that completes this question and that sadly ends this video. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found this video helpful. Do plenty of practice related exercises and I hope to see you again. Thank you.